Hi and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. Today we are going to play with the UPS integration via NUT or Network UPS Tools. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we begin today's episode, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, your support really means a lot. And now let's get cracking with the video. In today's episode, we will be playing with the network UPS tools. Not directly, I will be installing it or enabling it inside Synology, because as you all know, I'm using Synology, but if you are not using Synology, you will have to find a way how to install it on your operating system. It should be pretty straightforward, but that part, except for Synology, is not included in this video. The next step will be enabling it inside Synology, then enabling it inside Home Assistant, integrating it, and pulling all the values we can pull from the UPS. The values that you will be seeing here are provided by my UPS. It doesn't mean that all UPSs will provide the same data. Some may even provide more. And the last part of the video will be me showing you what automations I use and I have been using for some time in my home assistant to help me when there is a power loss at my home. And unfortunately, in 2020, I did have a couple of them that were prolonged and yeah. So let's get started. First thing is to go to Synology, at least for those that do have Synology device. There we will enable UPS. As one of the prerequisites for this tool to work is to have Network UPS tools or NAT working. And as I'm also using Synology, first step for me is to enable it inside the Synology system. For this go to Control Panel, Hardware and Power, UPS. Make sure that your UPS is connected with the USB cable to the Synology. After you've connected your UPS to Synology, you will see this message. UPS has been connected, you can enable UPS support. So let's enable it. There are a couple of things that you can change here. You can use time before the station enter safe mode, but I prefer it to be in the until load battery state. Also, I have enabled shutdown UPS when the system enters safe mode, because it saves a little bit power inside the UPS and it also allows me to restart my system much faster. The third option that we have to enable here is enable network UPS server. This enables us to connect to our Synology and receive inside our home assistant information about the UPS. By clicking here, you will see information about your UPS. And here you can specify the list of IP addresses that can access this UPS information on the NAT server. These two are my IP addresses from my Home Assistant setups and I want or I need both of them to have this information. Let's press OK and let's press here Apply. It will take a couple of seconds for system to accept the changes or apply the changes and start the Network UPS Tools server. Of course, this works for the Synology. If you are using alternative operating system, then unfortunately you have to find a way how to install NAT server on that system. But it should be pretty simple. We are done now inside Synology and we now have to go to our Home Assistant. Inside Home Assistant, the integration itself is pretty easy. You just have to go to Configuration, Integrations, click on Add Integration, Search here for NUT, Network UPS Tools. Write here the IP address of the NUT server or NAT server. Leave the port as is and we are not using any username or password. Just press on Submit. Now comes the fun part. Here you have the list of all the things that you can add to the Home Assistant. It's up to you to decide what data you want to add, but for the purpose of this video, I will add them all. Status, load, UPS shutdown relay, load reboot timer, load shutdown timer, self-test result, nominal real power, beeper status, battery charge, low battery set point, 
warning battery set point battery voltage nominal battery voltage battery runtime low battery runtime battery date battery manufacturer date better chemistry input power sensitivity low voltage high voltage input voltage nominal voltage and status and we'll click here on submit let me select the area and let's press on finish we now have 23 entities added here is the information about the UPS, make model, firmware version, what automations are available. And these here are all the entities we have now added. Our battery is 100% charge, is lead acid battery, UPS battery date. Unfortunately, I'm using a non-standard battery or let's call it late third party battery. So this date is wrong and I haven't updated it. Also, battery manufacturer date is probably wrong. Runtime, this is expected runtime on this battery. Battery voltage, is the beeper enabled or not? High voltage transfer, this is the voltage when the UPS will take over, meaning that if voltage goes above 20, 280 volts, it will transfer from the main grid to batteries. Power sensitivity, input voltage, UPS load is currently on 11%. Reboot and shutdown timers, low battery runtime, meaning that if there is a two minutes left of battery runtime, the UPS will initiate the system to go to shutdown. UPS low battery set point, 10%. Low voltage transfer means that if the voltage drops to 155 volts, it will once again transfer to the battery. Nominal battery voltage, nominal input voltage, nominal real power, self-test result, is the UPS online or not? These two will change depending on is it on the battery, is it recharging the battery and things like that. Shutdown delay and UPS warning battery set point is at 50%. Let's add these to Lovelace. We will add these to, let's add it here because this is the currently empty one. Add to Lovelace UI. The question now is what you can do with this? As you've seen, there are three automations that I've created for my system. This is UPS power failure. With this, I receive notification on the mobile phones that the power has failed and the UPS has kicked in. This one is triggered when the power is restored and the UPS starts to recharge. And the last one is triggered when the power is restored and the battery is full. Let's see those automations. This is the first automation power failure. Trigger is when the UPS status state changes to on battery, battery discharging. Upon this status, I send following message to my family. Power failure, UPS running, with the tag emergency, and it also goes to Telegram bot. When the power is restored, we are tracking this state, so entity is sensor, UPS status, platform state, when it changes from on battery, battery discharging, to online, battery charging, that means that the power has been restored, but the battery is still not fully charged. I then kick this notification, power restored, battery charging, restoring boolean to off. Why am I using here boolean? Boolean is used to track if the UPS has been running on the batteries and batteries were depleted, or if the power was restored before the UPS went into shutdown. And why do you need this? For example, some of the devices are not great in restoring their state. I so far had a couple of examples, the last one being the earthquake that hit us a couple of days ago. But unfortunately, as my system failed to start due to some other issues, I wasn't able to track the state and my lights were turned on until I returned to the apartment. All of these automations and of course this input boolean I'm using to track if the power was restored before the UPS shutdown can be found on my GitHub repository. The link to repository is down in the comment section of the video. So what are your other options? As you may have seen, we are monitoring here a lot of states. So for example, you can also monitor UPS runtime battery in seconds, meaning that you receive notification when it falls down to, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes, then 10 minutes, then five minutes, depending on how you want to set it. The next thing that you want to track maybe is the UPS battery voltage. If the battery voltage starts to drop and you have main power, it means that the battery is getting old, then it should be probably replaced. 
Other thing is that you can get a notification if the UPS load is over a certain percentage, especially if the UPS starts working. So for example, as I have two systems working on this single UPS, what I can do is I can initiate a shutdown command on my recording setup to turn off as soon as the UPS starts, so I can save a bit more power for my main setup. And this is it for this Home Assistant how-to with Bearded Tinker. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and that it will help you to implement UPS control inside your Home Assistant. If you need help with anything, you can always find me on the Discord server, but also feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates and I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun!